Hi, it's Kipping Low Bates here, and quite a few people have asked me what I thought of Jackson Palmer's series of tweets in which he announces that he is no longer going to have anything to do with cryptocurrency and derides the whole thing as a uh, scam. In fact, I've printed out the list of tweets on a bit of paper because I couldn't memorize them all. Now, looking through them, uh, I agree with some of the points that uh, Palmer makes. Uh, incidentally, uh, Jackson Palmer is the guy behind Dogecoin. He uh, is the person who launched that and it was meant as a, um, a joke but it has actually taken off and become something surprisingly valuable. Um, anyway, let's uh, go through his tweets uh, sort of one at a time and I'll just uh, comment on them as I uh, see fit. So the first thing is that uh, Palmer says, I believe that cryptocurrency is an inherently right-wing hyper-capitalistic technology built primarily to amplify the wealth of its proponents through a combination of tax avoidance, diminished regulatory oversight and artificially enforced scarcity. Uh, wow, there's a lot of things to unpack there. Uh, firstly, an inherently right-wing technology. Uh, I don't understand how a technology can be right wing. It's the people who are applying it who could have a political allegiance or, or an agenda to uh, pursue. Uh, the technology itself is just the technology. It's like uh, anything that we invent. You can use it for good or you can use it for evil, uh, except maybe guns, which generally speaking are just used for evil. Um, but uh, so that's that bit. Hyper capitalistic. I don't really know what that means. Super duper capitalistic. Um, and certainly if you're using uh, blockchain technology, well, I suppose, no, we're not talking about blockchain here, we're talking about cryptocurrency, so let's focus on that. Um, that one, um, I don't know what to say about because I'm not entirely clear what hypercapitalism is. Um, built primarily to amplify the wealth of its proponents. Uh, well, Nakamoto invented cryptocurrencies and has um, a somewhere in the region of 1 million bitcoins and therefore is indeed uh, incredibly wealthy but Nakamoto has also refused to touch that uh, wealth hoard so um, if Nakamoto's aims were to become incredibly wealthy then he or she has a very strange perception as to what one should do with wealth namely just to leave it sitting there so I think that doesn't really um, sort of chime with me um, uh, through a pro combination of tax avoidance. Now, I don't know what other countries are like, but in Finland, uh, the cryptocurrency profits that you make are tracked and taxed very carefully and very thoroughly. I don't see how you can avoid unless you can find a shady cryptocurrency exchange and they are becoming less and less common by the year. So, uh, also, I don't think that a lot of people go into cryptocurrencies uh, with the primary aim of avoiding taxes. So uh, I think that one's wrong. Uh, diminished regulatory oversight. Well, yes, whenever you have a new thing, you have diminished, well, not diminished regulatory oversight, you have uh, no regulatory oversight, and then regulations come in over time. Uh, this is the problem we see in traditional finance as well. When a, a new um, financial instrument is invented, the effects of it are not foreseen and then problems arise and then the regulation comes in to do something about it. Uh, for example, just look back at the 2008 uh, financial crisis. In fact, even there, there was regulation in place, but it was circumvented or just ignored and there was a lot of collusion. So, uh, yes, I agree that the regulatory oversight of cryptocurrencies is low compared to conventional finance. However, it's increasing all the time and that's to be expected whenever you have anything new. So I don't see why that is an amazing insight. And artificially enforced scarcity. Now that's an odd one. Um, it's artificial because cryptocurrencies are artificial created things and the scarcity is indeed enforced. If you look at, for example, Bitcoin, from the very beginning it's totally transparent exactly how many satoshis to the satoshi will ever be produced um, but it does seem a bit like saying that the earth has an artificially enforced scarcity of gold because there is only a certain amount in the planet and once the last gram is mined well then there is no more however there's one big difference between the artificial scarcity of cryptocurrencies and the uh, scarcity of natural resources, which is that human beings can take natural resources and artificially decide to withhold some of them 
hoard them, store them, keep the amount secret in order to affect market prices. I think uh, this happens in uh, quite a few industries. So one off the top of my head, I guess, uh, for example, the diamond industry is known for uh, um, keeping the uh, amount, you know, the quantity of diamonds produced at an artificially low level in order to increase their value. Um, cryptocurrencies, you can't artificially reduce the number that are produced. It's programmed in. You know from the very start that there is going to be a certain amount and you know the rate at which they are going to arrive, roughly speaking, which is something that you do not see with natural resources. So uh, that one doesn't make sense to me either. Uh, next paragraph. Gosh, we've only handled the first part of the tweak here. Uh, despite claims of decentralization, the cryptocurrency industry is controlled by a powerful cartel of wealthy figures who, with time, have evolved to incorporate many of the same institutions tied to the existing centralized financial system they supposedly set out to replace. Uh, I don't know who these wealthy figures are. I mean, they may be there if they're a shadowy cartel then uh, I wouldn't know about them. I'm not a, certainly not a member of that cartel. Uh, how it's... T same institutions tied to the existing centralized financial system. Okay, I, I don't know enough about how the wealthy and influential in the cryptocurrency space are colluding with um, traditional finance in order to ensure that. Um, yes, I can believe that uh, people who are sitting on vast hordes of particular cryptocurrencies with high value can and do occasionally engage in um, activities to manipulate uh, those systems in order to increase their wealth. That's kind of what people do, and it's unfortunate that that's in the human makeup, but uh, um, I don't think that's unique to cryptocurrencies. Whenever you have anything new that comes along that makes some people wealthy, those people have power and control. We've seen the same with uh, the internet, for example. So uh, nothing there that uh, uh, says cryptocurrency is different and unpleasant. If uh, Jackson Palmer is leaving cryptocurrency because of that reason, well, then he should also stop using the Internet. Um, the cryptocurrency industry leverages a network of shady business connections bought by influencers and pay for media outlets to perpetuate a cult-like get-rich-quick funnel designed to extract new money from the financially desperate and naive. Well, yes, I'll agree with that. There are an awful lot of scams in the cryptocurrency world. There's an awful lot of pump and dump schemes. That's unfortunate. We, of course, saw exactly the same stuff with stocks in the um, beginning of the 20th century. A lot of people became very wealthy by insider trading and stock market manipulation, and then regulation was brought in to stop that. Uh, I'm guessing that given cryptocurrency is still in its infancy, um, just as you have with every other new development in finance or technology, there will be some manipulation and some problems. Hopefully they can be ironed out, but I agree with uh, Jackson Palmer on that. Uh, financial exploitation undoubtedly existed before cryptocurrency. Oh good, yeah. But cryptocurrency is almost purpose-built to make the funnel of profiteering more efficient for those at the top and less safeguarded for the vulnerable. Well, again, I don't think that Nakamoto set out to build a, an alternate financial system that allowed a select group of people to uh, profit at the expense of others. It makes it sound like it's um, purpose-built for this, and that, well, if you look at the history of cryptocurrency, is definitely not the case. Now, some people have since gone on to try to build systems that do that, but this is like saying that uh, we should not have anything to do with email because it helped uh, Nigerian scam um, uh, emails to come into existence. It's uh, more a question of, well, what can we do in order to control it? And that, again, takes time. In the same way that spam filters did not just spring up overnight and people had to become educated that the internet and email were a good conduit for scammers to take advantage of the naive. Um, again, it's a problem, but I don't see why you can then turn around and say, therefore, I'm having nothing to do with it. That would be like saying, I refuse to accept any emails from now on because occasionally I get one trying to scam me. Uh, cryptocurrency is like taking the worst parts of today's capitalist system, e.g. corruption, fraud, inequality, and using software to technically limit the use of interventions, e.g. audits, regulation, taxation, which serve as protections or safety nets for the average person. Well, again, when this all started off, um, I do believe that uh, some saw 
cryptocurrency as an opportunity to avoid taxation and to launder money and stuff like that, what is actually becoming apparent is that given the open and transparent nature of these ledgers, uh, it is very easy to track the movement of illegal transactions and eventually actually find the people responsible for them in a way that conventional finance does not provide. So if anything, sticking with cryptocurrency means that over time we will have more oversight, more regulation and more ability to ensure that the transactions that are taking place actually do comply with uh, laws and regulations. So again, I think that's sort of missing the long-term picture here. Um, Lose your savings account password, your fault. For victim to scam, your fault. Billionaires manipulating markets, the geniuses. Hmm. Well, yes, uh, it is unfortunate in cryptocurrencies that if you are responsible, if you've taken responsibility for your own private keys and you lose them, then you lose your money. Um, that is a bit like deciding not to keep your money in the bank but putting it in a chest and burying it in the garden. If you can't remember later where you buried it, you've lost your money. Again, we don't turn around and say, well, therefore, I will never have cash because um, I might lose it. What you do is you have a mixed strategy or you find um, a custodian who you can trust. And admittedly, the early custodians were not trustworthy. Um, over time, this will, <laughs> I know I'm saying this a lot, over time, we're seeing things improve dramatically in that space in the terms of not just more and more reliable custodians, some with insurance to look after your wealth, but also tools that allow you to look after your wealth in a safer manner. It's kind of like, actually, I use the word safe there. We're getting hardware equipment that uh, is like a digital version of a safe. And uh, so it, it's improving. And again, ditching on it because um, in the early days there were these problems is, I think, short-sighted. Um, billionaires man manipulating markets, they're geniuses. I don't see that. I see a lot of criticism of these kind of things. And if, for example, somebody manages to find a loophole in a DeFi um, protocol that allows them to drain it of funds, I don't see people jumping up and down and cheering them on. In general, there's a feeling of dismay and a thought of let's go back and improve what we're doing here and learn from this. It's unfortunate that the financial lessons that had to be learnt cost a lot. We're talking tens or hundreds of millions. But then again, if you look at the financial disasters that we have had due to mismanagement of the financial system by the big established players, by the masters of the universe, we as a society have paid much, much bigger prices for the lessons learned from these kind of financial crises. And again, I'm thinking of the 2008 uh, financial crisis in particular, because that's one that I was really hyper aware of um, due to all the media coverage and seeing what was happening in countries like Greece and to friends of mine who were from there, uh, who were paying the price of the mismanagement of uh, the people who caused the whole crisis in the first place. So um, let me now turn to the rest of this. Um, this is the type of dangerous free-for-all capitalism cryptocurrency was unfortunately architected to facilitate since its inception. I don't understand why Jackson Palmer seems to think that cryptocurrency was specifically engineered to do all this stuff. Yes, some of these things happen, uh, but I think they're side effects. The, it's pretty clear to me that the aim and drive behind all of this um, as seen in uh, the writings of Nakamoto, was precisely to avoid this kind of stuff. It does seem that it's an emergent property of financial systems that uh, greed and corruption um, come along hand in hand, and then we have to work on dealing with them. Um, but he keeps going on and on about it being an intent, as though Nakamoto sat down with a cabal of people and said, how could we become immensely wealthy? And uh, uh, came up with cryptocurrency as the answer to that. Um, I have to turn around because I can't see the paper with the sunlight there. Um, but these days, even the most modest critique of cryptocurrency will draw smears from the powerful figures in control of the industry and the ire of retail investors who they've sold the false promise of one day being a fellow billionaire. Good faith debate is nearly impossible. Um, I guess that Jackson Palmer moves in different circles to me because generally speaking, I find that I don't get much in the way of um, ad hominem attacks for the criticisms that I make of smart contracts and cryptocurrencies. Um, I, admittedly, when I criticized the 
uh, MENA protocol and the Pi network, I got some, what I suppose you could call nasty comments from people, but generally they were just telling me that I was a sad, deluded person and I was missing out on becoming very wealthy. So, you know, water off a duck's back there. Um, maybe Jackson Palmer moves in different circles and in those circles people are more unpleasant. I don't know. I applaud those with energy to continue asking the hard questions and applying the lens of rigorous skepticism all technology should be subjected to. Well, I do too. I think that uh, it is very important to try and think as deeply as you can over these things, especially if they have the potential to affect the lives of millions and billions of people, which I do think cryptocurrency has, as we're seeing, for example, in the emergence of central bank digital currencies, which I don't think would have arisen if it hadn't have been for the emergence of cryptocurrency. So, uh, yeah, I agree with uh, Jackson Palmer there. New technology can make the world a better place, but not when decoupled from its inherent politics or societal consequences. Well, yes, technology can make the world a better place, but uh, you need to take the societal consequences into account. I agree with that. But inherent politics, that's again, we're back to Jackson Palmer presenting this idea that technology somehow has a political agenda. and. That is something that I would disagree with. Technology just is what it is. It's the use that people put it to and the agendas that those people have, conscious or subconscious, that matter. And I think a lot of the times, actually, it's accidental or subconscious um, political agendas that cause the problems. I don't think that technologists, generally speaking, set out to invent technologies that achieve particular political aims. Most of the technologists I know do it because they find it interesting and fascinating and love looking into it. That is perhaps a problem, namely that uh, engineers and technologists don't think deeply enough about the political, societal um, and sociological um, ramifications of the stuff that they work on. But uh, it doesn't mean that the technology itself somehow has some political will of its own. Anyway, that's the entire tweet series analysed. Um, I think I agree with, off the top of my head, I'd say about 20% of what Palmer says here. And there are some things that he says that I find, quite frankly, bizarre. Um, I don't know if that will mean that I get lumped into the group of people that he thinks of as being, um, where was it? Uh, uh, stuff about criticizing them. Oop, I've lost it. Uh, good faith debate is nearly impossible. Well, I'm perfectly happy to have a good faith debate with Jackson Palmer where he could address some of the points that I made if he wants to. I doubt it though because as he said at the beginning he's um, left cryptocurrency and this is a talk about cryptocurrency so I guess the opportunity there for good faith debate is over. Anyway, uh, there you go. Those of you who asked me to look through those tweets, that's my assessment of those tweets. I think on the surface they look plausible but there's lots and lots of holes that need to be addressed and I think there's some rather uh, not thought out assumptions uh, that have been made in its writing. Um, I look forward to comments from the rest of you. I am more than happy to have a good debate about these kind of things, uh, in particular areas where I've admitted that I don't know enough about it in order to be able to comment um, accurately or usefully on. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video soon. Bye for now.